my viewers to and my listeners to uh interact with me on TV, the internet and media raising society. I personally don't think this is a bad thing. And it's because just like there's bad TV, there's bad parents and nobody like if you encounter some kind of dickhead on the street, you never blame somebody's parents for their actions. Mm-hmm. You you confront them for exactly who they are in that moment. So why would you try to blame the TV for the upbringing of this generation? Like, I get it. I understand what you're saying, but you can't place all the blame on that. Um, Like, I, I'm going to give a little parable. There was a father. He was an alcoholic and he had two sons. One of his sons grew up to be an alcoholic and one of his sons grew up to be a successful businessman. And... One day, one of their friends asked each of them about how they got to the, you know, where they are in life. And the friend asked the alcoholic brother, how did you end up being an alcoholic? And he goes, I watched my father. You know, then he asked his brother, you know, the successful businessman, how did you become so successful? And he goes, I watched my father. These guys had the same bad example but they process the information different. It's all about what we do with what we're presented. Honestly, I feel like the, the difference between like good TV and bad TV is how they present conflict and how they choose to deal with it. And within like quote unquote good TV, um, you know, like reality TV and like love and hip hop and shit, like, like the ratchet stuff, that's what I consider bad TV. But like good TV, I feel like they're presented with conflict. They deal with the issue and then, you know, things get better. Like like that's the that's the progression of the show. Like it starts in one spot, there's an issue, everybody tries to resolve it, happy ending. Whereas in bad television, quote unquote, there's an issue from the last episode. Now there's a new issue. They try to resolve the issue. They get the issue gets worse. And then that, that's the next issue for the next episode. And then they have to compile all their issues and it, like, never gets resolved. And they try to solve the issue with bad, just, like, what do you, how do you say it? They try to resolve the issue using bad tactics. Facts. Or they take small problems and make them bigger than what they really were. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that another, like, main difference is that good TV shows approach conflict in a very vanilla kind of way. Like, or the conflicts are, are just, the conflicts in general are just very vanilla. Like, it's, it's stuff that I wouldn't find to be a problem in real life to begin with. Mm-hmm. Like, let's see. In, f- like in Full House, there was this episode where DJ went to, like the school prom or something like that. And there was these guys drinking beer. Like the whole issue of that episode, the conflict was that they thought that she was underage drinking. But then they found out what actually happened and the problem was resolved. But in a real life situation, if I see some high schoolers or some middle schoolers or whatever, and they got beer in the school prom or whatever, damn son. (laughs) <laughs> I guess I won't be a part of that. And and I just walk away. Now, good TV shows, quote unquote good TV shows, I feel like they approach everything in a vacuum. Like, as if we're in a perfect world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, in a perfect world, DJ is stopping these boys from drinking underage in the middle school. But at least in the New York world. That's none of my business. It's either none of my business or now I got a beer too. Mm-hmm. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like... Whereas in bad TV shows, if there's underage drinking in that, which I doubt it. I don't think there's any legally televised stuff with underage drinking, like reality shows. Mm -hmm. But even if there was, that wouldn't be the sole focus of the episode. That's probably something that would go so unnoticed. Like, I don't know. And another thing, like, about the good TV shows, quote unquote, is that they don't really provoke real thought. Like, there might be an episode all about saying no to drugs, and it's like... But duh. 
Exactly. You 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 kind of end the show and it's like, but duh. You fall in love with these shows basically because you either grew up on them or because you just really like the cast and it's just easy to consume television. Um and another thing I don't like about like quote unquote good TV shows is that the the conflicts are typically resolved in like one episode. Yeah, and that's not realistic. For real. And an- another thing I don't like about good TV shows is that the the problems are always resolved. You know how many times in real life you're going to have a problem and they just don't get resolved? The only way that the problems resolve is when you guys choose to basically be like fuck it, I don't care. Whereas in in uh TV shows that are very vanilla like that, it's like there's a right and a wrong always. There's never two people just seeing things in a different way. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Um, they they just kind of it it kind of makes you, especially if you grow up in New York, it kind of throws off your your expectations for what you're supposed to see outside of your house. You know, like, I, how do I say this? I don't care how many say no to drugs episodes or don't drink. Or don't fight episodes you might see. That's all you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. You're going to be seeing niggas drinking, doing drugs, and fighting your whole damn life. Like, And yeah, the whole point of the episode is to say no to it. But the, at the end of the day, you're going to be in more than... How do I say this? There's more issues with drugs than saying yes or no to them. There's There's violence over drugs. Um, once you know somebody on drugs, it's a, it's about how you see their whole lives be torn down. They don't really teach you how to address that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Ned's the Classified. I'm gonna bring up that show. Uh, this this is on to a different topic. When when I saw that show, I was like, "Hey, yo, middle school seems pretty retarded," or high school seems pretty retarded. Like, man, I'm gonna be. I'll be perfectly fine once I get there. If this is if this is how it's gonna be like, well, I'm gonna have a crush on a girl. You know, I might get in a little scuffle right here and there. Eh, I'll be fine. And then you go to high school and it's like, bro, it's psychological warfare. That like that's something that you were not expecting. Or, or um, <laughs> they make it seem like you're gonna get bullied every day. It's gonna be the worst Word. experience. That's what life. I'm saying. Like. I just think that quote unquote good TV is very disingenuous and it doesn't really prepare anybody for anything. They kind of, I think, I think those shows are for children. Full House, Family Matters, well, shows like that, they're, they're for children, you know, they, and if you're learning something while watching Full, Ho- Full House as a grown ass adult, you have issues. Anyway. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about bad TV, uh, you know, the love and hip hop, Real Housewives, stuff like that. The one thing that I'll say that's good about those shows is that you'll you'll be able to identify like people that act like them. You'll you'll be able to pick out fake people. You'll be able to pick out. um, You'll be able to pick out like problem starters. You'll 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 see the ones that you shouldn't be in relationships with because you'll see. As you cut on that TV that a lot of the people you hang out with, you could replace all the people on TV with the people you hang out with almost. Um, I'm going to talk about what I don't like about those shows. I do appreciate how they're more realistic because I, I guess like more of this stuff goes on in real life or, or you're more likely to have to deal with those kind of situations. The problem with those shows are though is that it's almost, it's almost as if they were praising... They romanticizing toxic relationships. Thank you. They ro- they romanticize toxic relationships. And then on top of that, they make it seem like once you get out of a toxic relationship, you got no options. Mm. Like, how many times you watch a reality TV show and they, out of all the people, out of the billions of people in this world, they end up dating the same, like, two, three people within this toxic-ass love triangle that everybody else is dating in within too. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's just mad dirty. Like, yeah. like, let me think. Let me, th- I think Love and Hip Hop New York. I think three or three to five of those people definitely dated each other. 
Saf- Safari. Safari. And his, his and his the girl that he done got pregnant. Erica the, Mena and Sin. You see what I'm saying? Sin and Joe. Oh, yeah. Joe and Tahiri. Like that's mad dirty. And now that I'm talking about it and thinking about it, that's why the, that's why there be mad problems on those shows because yo, if you've been to the public school system, I don't care what public school you went to. It could be the greatest greatest white public school or the worst dirtiest minority public school. Like y'all know what it's like to be dating somebody and then they break up with you and then they're dating somebody else within that building and you could just see it. You don't necessarily need to be friends or even know that person, but you kind of see it going on. That gets that kind of vexes you. It gets on your nerves. Now, now make that whole public school about six people. Y'all all know each other and fuck with each other and now everybody's dating each other and now, and you're expected not to feel a kind of way when that does happen. Mm-hmm. Like then on top of that, I don't know if you guys noticed this, the producers keep them drunk. Like they be drunk high all episode so they be wigging out and bugging out over really little shit like um i'm not even kidding there was one episode i don't know these these people's names but they all meet up to have like some kind of get together it was like four people and the issue was they were in a room with somebody that they didn't like that was literally the whole issue right there and they started throwing drinks and stuff at each other yeah yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah I know you're talking about. They they were all dead ass sitting there drinking and chilling. Mm-hmm. I'm t- first of all. And these people used to be friends too. For, yo, first of all, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you what's up with. I'm gonna tell you this whole situation why I thought it was retarded. Everybody in the room was cool, right? But one one of the people in the room wanted to invite their friend that everybody was cool with except for one person. That doesn't sound like a big deal, right? But imagine this. It's different when you're not cool with somebody, right? If I'm not cool with somebody and you invite them, I personally wouldn't care. But it wasn't that they weren't cool with this person. They dead ass hated this person. Like, it was like an on-site kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And everybody understood that. But yet, guess who's knocking on, the, knocking on the door? As soon as she got there, there was issues. And they were women. Y'all know how women get. Come on now. Anyway, they just start... And bitch-ass niggas. Anyway, they just start, you know, throwing drinks and stuff. And the whole, I went on a whole spiel to basically say that bad TV will give you a more realistic rundown of what you're going to see, but they do a hyper focus on like drama, Mm -hmm. just chaos. Uh, Another thing that I don't like is I'm going to get to the character development of how of the characters on good and bad TV In good TV, the characters don't develop. At all. Because they're already like. Angels. And then. The character development for bad TV. Is that they either develop. Extremely well. I mean excuse me. They either regress. And get worse. Or they stay. You know. The same shady person the whole entire season. They never get better. And if they do get better. It's for like a hot second. For that episode. Then the next episode. They're on some bullshit again. Um, and as I said before. But most of the problems are just fabricated. Mm-hmm. You know, this part I want to focus in on the most. Bad TV is very politically charged. I was watching Grand Army and Degrassi. Degrassi is basic. Y- y'all know what Degrassi is. Grand Army is the Brooklyn version of Degrassi um, by Canadians. Anyway, Degrassi was so politically charged that. I'm not even playing. I think there were there was one gay character and like one bisexual character in the beginning of the the show, and by the end of the season, everybody was gay. Like I'm not even. Am I lying? Yo, everybody ended up being gay or trans by the end of that season, and it was it was over some really dumb shit too. Like there was this girl who she wasn't like a girly girl, and I know many girls that are not girly girls. She liked video games. She liked hanging out with the guys. Not even on no whole shit. She was just like chilling. She was cool. Mm-hmm. And one day she was like, hey, yo, 
Well, well, no, 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 that's not what happened. Her friend was really, like, feminine and girly, and she was getting attention from guys and stuff like that. She was like, why are you getting attention from guys? Da, da, da. And it was because she was, like, a girly girl, and she was, I guess, kind of cute, whatever. I don't know. And so, basically, the way she took that is, wow, I'm not a girly girl. And so her friend goes, well, maybe you're, like, somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the f- No, like, she's just not girly. Like, she's not prissy and, like, prissy like you. Like, and basically, if there's any young children watching that show, any young girls that don't feel girly girly, what if they saw that scene and where they were like, maybe I am in between? You're going to confuse them for the rest of their fucking life. And it's unfair. First of all, when you're not a girly girl, you already feel like there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I swear. You feel like you don't fit in. So, if they already feel like they don't fit in, and then you push that narrative, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to think they're a dragoness or whatever the hell. <laughs> whatever the term is, I don't know. These sound like animal species, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry for my LGBTQ community listeners, but y'all got to get y'all shit together. Y'all know that shit sounds fucking ridiculous. Y'all need to get that shit in check. And I'm speaking from the heart. I don't hate you. I don't hate anybody. But when you got everybody confused out their ass about something that was very clear and cut to begin with, boy and girl, now everybody has an issue. Now y'all got everybody fighting over a bunch of over a bunch of goddamn nonsense, bro. Like, come on now. Come on. Get get your community together. Y'all could do that in your own shit. Stop forcing it on everybody. And if you're not a girly girl, people they assume that you're gay. Like, no. <laughs> Word. She's not a girly girl. And you know, yo, this is the crazy thing about her becoming androgynous or Aaron. gender fluid or whatever. I don't know what it was. This is the whole thing. She was a girl with a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even playing. She had a whole boyfriend. And it's because she got a man that fucked with her vibe. You like video games. You're a nerd. And I think you're cute. And then, what's it called? Hunter, I think his name was, he was already mentally, like, he had his own mental yeah, issues. He, was, he had an anger issue. Yeah. And he basically overcame his hump. He went to therapy. He was straight. Mm-hmm. And then the whole school, they tried to make the whole school hate him because he didn't want to be with a non-binary person. Mm-hmm. Which made him have a mental lapse again. Because, first of all, he didn't know what she was identifying with. Like, do you think you're a dude? Because if you think you're a dude, I'm not gay. Exactly. That that's just a question that gets on my nerves. It's like, I'm not I'm not out here asking people what they are, but like, if you are to be in a relationship with a person and you do end up, I don't know how this would happen, but if you do do this to your significant other, and they want to know if you're a boy or a girl, and you can't answer that, and they don't want to fuck with you, you can't get mad at them for that. You really can't. Um. Look, all I'm trying to say is, like, the media, it's not necessarily bad that we're being raised by it. I personally wasn't raised by the TV because I had a whole lot of other shit going on. I was rarely ever home anyway. But before we try to blame the TV for the outcome of, you know, the next generation or our generation then I guess you could just blame books for the same shit because they were doing nothing but reading back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know? And then before that, you could just blame it on people talking. So, at some point, you got to take accountability. 